Hey guys, welcome to another lit review. In this lit review, the paper we'll be discussing is surgical approach options for pylon fractures. This is written by Warner and Lorig. And this is not really an experimental study paper, but more of a tips and pearls in how to treat uh, pylon fractures. Now pylon, uh, the word in French meaning pestle, describes a type of traumatic injury that is basically a more of an axial compression type of uh, mechanism. Because the force is coming uh, from superior inferiorly, oftentimes the tibia at the ankle joint, the tibia and the talus come in contact and one bone, one of those bone breaks and oftentimes it is the tibia. So this still diaphyseal fracture of the tibia often describes the pylon. There could be a simple pylon fracture or as you can see in the picture, it could be comminuted and make it complicated. Now the soft tissue and the just the complicated nature of pylon fracture makes this uh, pylon type trauma a very uh, a challenging case to fix. Now when we're fixing these they are basically five principles uh, established by Rudy Al Gore in the 1970 that every night everyone pretty much follows. One is you want to put the fibula out to length. Um, second one is reduction of the joint. Third one is you want to make sure you want to augment any cortical defect by using bone graft. You want to make sure the articular surface is intact and aligned and make sure you're fixing all this using a stable fixation technique. Now before we get into the actual approaches of the pylons uh, surgically, uh, there are a couple, of, uh, there's a fragments that I just want to go over with you guys. So there's generally three type of fragments that are seen in the pylon uh, trauma cases. The anterior lateral fragment which is often attached to the AITFL, the medial malleolus that is attached to the deltoid ligament, and the posterior malleolus that is attached to the PITFL. Now the reason I'm telling you guys these fragments of the ligament is because when we look at the radiograph and understanding what fragments are present, we also understand the ligaments that are involved. And it is important to know the ligaments that are involved because ligament attachment essentially serves as a fixation point when you're treating these uh, uh, fracture. So for example, if you had a posterior mal uh, fragment, that is fractured basically, then you know that the PITFL, PITFL is attached there and by fixating the posterior mal, however you want to treat it, uh, whether it be a screw or a buttressing plate, you're basically providing a two stable fixation point via one via the, the ligament and one via the fixation that you're providing. So let's go into some of the approaches that the paper talks about. The extensile anterior medial approach is basically a, starts from the one centimeter lateral to the tibial crest and extends to the ankle joint and makes it a little bit of a 110 degree turn and ends up being at the tip of the medial malleolus. And when you're doing the superficial uh, dissection, you want to be careful of the saphenous vein. And as you go deeper, you will see the extensive vernaculum that you're eventually going to cut and you want to retract the tibial anterior muscle laterally um, and then you, you will end up where you want to see. Um, the, you will see the plafond, the talus, and the medial malleolus. Now when I'm going through all these approaches, the obvious limitation to these surgical approaches is going to be location. If you're going through the anteromedial approach, you're obviously not going to have a visualization of say for example anterior lateral or posterior lateral. So just keep that in mind. A, diff a second approach that they talked about is anterior lateral approach is basically from the five centimeter proximal to the ankle joint uh, between the fibula and the tibial crest and extends down onto the fourth med. Uh, the structures that you have to be careful when you're doing these uh, dissection is a superficial peroneal nerve. And again, this approach has limitation in its uh, location. Lateral approach is basically the incision between the edge of the fibula that extends down distally to three to four centimeters past the ankle joint, uh, curves slightly, and the structure that you have to be careful is superficial peroneal nerve again. Uh, so there's minor differences between the incision sites, but it all is dictated by the location of the fracture and how you want to fix it. Posterior lateral approach is Basically, the patient can be in prone or semi-lateral decubitus. The incision is the medial border of fibula and the lateral border of Achilles tendon. And when you're doing this incision, you want to be careful of the sural nerve. 
So the next approach is a poster meteor approach, which is basically the line between the poster meteor border of the tibia and the meteor border of Achilles tendon. Um, there could be some modification of this incision. It could be a little bit more medial, closer to the uh, uh, Achilles tendon. Uh, but going through the dissection, you just have to be you could you just have to be careful of the neurovascular bundle, especially being in the, in the medial side. Uh, the last approach that they talked about is minimally invasive technique, and this is basically where you make about three or four centimeter oblique incision at the medial malleolus, and you put in a plate. Uh, this picture was from a different paper, but basically it's a long plate, and it uses a is a type of bridging plate um, that basically heals the bone via secondary uh, bone healing process. Uh, I've seen this uh, done in surgery recently, and I think it's a pretty cool plate, and it's, they call it the MEPO plate, Minimally Invasive Plate uh, Osteofensis, and I think it's, it's gaining popularity among surgeons because it, it reduces um, skin incision. So these are the general outline and the approaches that are available for pylon fractures, but the obvious limitations of any of these approaches is basically the location. If you are approaching, for example, from posterior medial, then you're not gonna get the, um, the visualization of the area of the other side. Um, generally, when you're treating a pylon fracture, you are going to most likely need more than one incision. So choosing which incision you wanna use is very crucial and, under and that comes from understanding the type of fracture you have and how you wanna fixate these uh, fracture. One another thing that the authors noted is that we learn in the uh, lower extremity leg, you do not want to have incisions that are close more than seven centimeters apart because you might have skin necrosis. But the authors say that you could have closer incision, maybe like five centimeters. So five centimeters acceptable uh, distance between the two incision sites. And from there, you, it's up to you, the surgeon, to analyze and evaluate the fracture pattern and how you want to fixate it. Um, to basically come up with which approach to use. And obviously the, there are neovascular and vas um, uh, structures that are around superficially and deep. So you have to be careful when you're making these uh, dissections. So I hope you enjoyed this kind of brief overview of pylon fractures and the approaches that, that are available. Um, if you liked it, please uh, remember to subscribe and tune in for the next video. And again, thanks for watching.